Alright, what's going on guys? It's your boy Scrubby here, back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. And today I've got a super cool story time that was uh, sent in to me, but I've never had a story like this sent in. It involves a rich kid being destroyed, but not standard. Dude works in an investment bank, so, uh, you know, a, a little bit higher stakes on what's going on. Either way, I thought it would be something you guys would enjoy, so that's what we're gonna be talking about. So before we get into it, be sure to press the like button, otherwise... No joke, no scam, GTA 6 will never come out. Yeah, that's right, I'm holding it hostage, so press the like button and let's go. Oh, and here's the comment of the day, don't worry, I didn't forget. I forgot for a bit, but not anymore. Alright, so as I said, the guy that sent this in to me works at an investment bank, and he's not high up or anything, he's like at the very bottom of the totem pole, but technically his title is asset manager, so he's got a little uh, bit of experience managing the stocks. Mostly handling like 401k accounts for companies, because I guess that's like a good job for new people, because there's a ton of regulations, you really have to stick to the guidelines. So, like, you really can't go lose a bunch of money doing stupid stock stuff because you have to have certain amounts of X, X, and Y. So he had been doing that for a while, and he was enjoying it, and he understood that, like, you gotta work your way up. Like, it just is what it is. It was a lot of work, but he saw that eventually, eventually, if you keep going and you get to the good part, you make a lot of money. And one day, he's sitting in his office, and his boss comes in, and he seems kind of shy. And his boss is not a shy guy. Like, usually, you'd be thinking to yourself, please shut up, if he was standing there talking to you, because it was just an endless stream of words. And he finally comes clean, and he's like, all right, my boss, so the guy above him, wants him to hire his kid. And he was going to be starting the next day, and, uh, you know, he was wondering if he would train him. And the guy's standing there like, bro, I'm handling the accounts that you told me are so easy, anyone couldn't mess it up. Like, a, a baby could manage this account, and you want me to train your boss's kid? And he's like, uh, yeah, I know you're new, but I just think you'll probably be the best at it, because he doesn't have a whole lot of education about it, he's just dipping his toe in. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with wanting to try something before you dedicate your life to it. That's a perfectly reasonable position. Like, okay, make sure you like something before you dedicate yourself to it. But I feel like mm, investment banking isn't really one of those things that you, you can kind of dip your toe in the kiddie pool on. Like, I feel like that topic, you either dive in or you don't. In my mind, it's like one of those topics, it's like law or, or being a doctor or like something that takes a ton of knowledge, like doctorate level stuff, you know, being a professor. In order to get to that level, you can't really just be like, mm, I want to try being a professor for a week. Like, well, no, you have to have years and years of knowledge in order to like know what they know. But whatever, he's like, yeah, sure, if you really want me to do it, fine, um, I can train him, I guess. And so his boss is pretty grateful. He's like, thank you. He's going to be cool. Like, I promise it's going to be fine. And he's just not really knowing what to expect. He was going in with no expectations because that way there's no way to be, like, dramatically disappointed. Eh, this could go good. This could go bad. Like, that's the attitude to have in a situation similar to this one. And you would think that if he had gone out of his way to, like, set up his, this job, even if his dad is the boss, like, if he had gone out of his way to apply himself, you know, and maybe learn a little bit, he would come in willing to learn even more. I feel like if it's your first day in a job in an industry you know nothing about, like, you should just be trying to learn as much as humanly possible. Because you're not an expert, there's a reason you're like an intern here, it's not because you're some stock trading genius. This guy hasn't been to school for finance, he has no like investing experience outside of what he's done on Robin Hood, which sure is experience, but not really the same thing as like managing multiple millions of dollars in portfolios for companies, like it's just not the same thing. Well, the guy comes in, and I'm gonna name him Eric for this story, that's not his name, but I just feel like naming him Eric. And Eric comes in and is off the rip, super polite to the guy's boss. He's like, wow, thank you so much for this opportunity. This is going to be great. He introduces him to Mark, which is the name of the subscriber. And he's like, Mark knows a lot. He just started here, so he's probably going to be good at explaining things that he wishes would have been explained a little bit better to him. So you guys are going to be working together. And Eric is like, oh, it's so great to meet you. I'm so excited to work together. 
And as soon as the boss walks away, it's like Eric gets possessed by a demon and he just snaps at him. Listen, man, I've watched tons of investing videos on YouTube, so I don't need any training, okay? I just want you to stay out of my way and let me do what I have to do. My goal is to get in and take over this company in a year. Like, bro is acting like he's straight out of Wolf of Wall Street, you know? I don't think he watched that movie to the end where they go to jail. Like, he's just coming in. I don't need any training. I'm not saying that there's not a lot of, like, knowledge on YouTube. You can learn about a lot of stuff on YouTube. But I do feel like, once again, investment banking is one of those things that, like, YouTube videos doesn't count as real-world experience. Imagine there's a medical emergency and the guy pulls up and he's like, All right, guys, <clears throat> don't worry. I've watched a YouTube video on how to perform a lobotomy. And they're like, dude, his ankle is broken. Why would you need to do brain surgery? You can learn a lot. You can have a lot of real world experience. And some people are geniuses and they don't need it. But that's not this situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're a savant and you're just out there trading stocks on your own and you're a multi-billionaire, none of this applies to you because you're a one in a bajillion chance. You're like the, the Taylor Swift of the investing world. But whatever, he just gets really snappy acting like he knows it all. And uh, Mark doesn't really know how to react to this. So he tries to nicely tell him like, you know, I'm glad you've learned about this a little bit. And I had a bunch of previous knowledge coming in too. But there's a lot of stuff that you probably don't know about that we have to kind of go over. Like there's a lot of laws and regulations. And Eric cuts him off and says, you old folks don't get it anymore, all right? I get that you're threatened because you realize I'm the future, but it is what it is. And at that point, Mark decides that he's not going to go out of his way to help this dude. He's just gonna let him do what he has to do. And the way that they train new people just to see their level of knowledge and, like, see if they could understand concepts being taught to them but not risk the business any money is they had the entire, like, the trading account management set up, not necessarily, like, day trading, but just portfolio management set up, and then they would give them $50,000, but, like, fake money, but they didn't tell them that. Like, it was the real software, but the money was not real. The, the prices were real, the movements were real. So that way, if they're an idiot and they, like, break the law, it's not like this entire uh, investment bank has to go belly up. They're just training them. And it's not a ginormous investment bank, by the way. I didn't realize that there's some that are not big. In my mind, all of them are just, like, Goldman Sachs because I don't know a lot about it. But this guy's is like, you know, there's, like, 40 people that work there. It's, it's relatively large. And so he sets him up the account and he's like, all right, well, if you need anything, please let me know. Like, I'm seriously here to help. I have I just started uh, about two years ago, so like I can help you. And once again, Eric cuts him off and he's like, listen, Mark, I don't need your help. All right, I'm here to outperform you, okay? And he just can't believe the ego on this dude. Because here's the thing. Obviously, if you're at the job to make money for people, then, like, you want to be the best at making money. Everyone knows that. That's just, like, an unspoken agreement amongst everybody there. But you don't have to throw your coworkers in the dumpster to do it. Like, everyone can make money, you know? It's not like only one of you has to have the ability to make money there. You have to snuff out everybody else. Hopefully, there's not only one guy at the bank that's capable of making money at a time. Could you imagine how bad the Sith would be at business? Uh, awkward Star Wars side note, but like, okay, there's only two of them. No wonder they haven't been able to succeed, dude. They don't have the funds. Oh no, there's two of us, like the Jedi, dude. You know, they, they figured it out. For a while, alright, we're not gonna talk about what happened after, but for a while, think about it, think about it. How are you supposed to scale your business without, like, a bunch of employees? And stormtroopers don't count, because they suck. Like, let's be honest, we've seen stormtrooper accuracy. Either way, he's just really gonna let this kid, like, jump into the deep end, and if he can swim, sweet, but if not, it's not his problem anymore. But they had a way to make sure that if somebody was, like, gonna really deny the training, that they had to sign an agreement with their trainer just so that way they couldn't go to the boss later and be like, oh, well, they never taught me anything. It's their fault. So you have to sign a paper being like, I told them that I do not want any training. I am 100% sure that I don't want any training. In fact, if anyone tries to train me, I will do the most insane 360 no scope Cobra Kai kick that you've ever seen in your life. And I will disconnect your jaw from the rest of your skull. But he goes to tell his boss about it because, you know, it's his boss's son. So if he's going to mess up and like not sign this training agreement and not take any training, then he figures that his boss probably should know about it just to be aware of it. 
And his boss is like, ah, can you please try to help him? You know, please, please, like, go in there and try one more time. And so Mark, being guilt-tripped by his boss, decides that he's going to go try one more time to talk to Eric. So he goes over there, and Eric literally, before he even says anything, says, go away, Mark, I'm trying to work. So he goes back to his boss, almost like he's playing ping-pong back and forth, and tells him. And so his boss says he's going to go try. So he goes to Eric's cubicle and says, wait here to Mark, like in his office. And he comes back 15 minutes later looking mad and says to Mark that Eric told him, the boss, that he was gunning for his job and he doesn't want any help. And even Mark is flabbergasted by that. Like, it's one thing to tell off some dude, I guess, that you don't really know. But to tell the guy that is giving you the chance to screw off and you're gunning for his job is a little out there. Like, that's a little disrespectful, you know? Even if your dad is super high up in the company, I don't think he would like that. Because I'm sure he would not appreciate somebody coming in and speaking to him like that the same way, you know? He is your boss at the end of the day. So whatever, he's over here threatening everybody's job. Like, he's just got the ability to just yefy at everybody. But then he pulls something out that surprises Mark. He has another letter where he rejected training from the boss. So now they have proof that he's rejected training from two different people. And he kind of asks his boss, like, well, why did you get a second one, you know? And he says, because I just, by the vibe the kid gave me about gunning for my job, know that the kid's going to do something shady if he can't perform. Like, he's going to try to find a way to blame us, and it's just a gut feeling. So they're waiting in the office, kind of talking about stuff, and about 30 minutes later, after this entire interaction, right? So, not a very long period of time, Eric comes into the boss's office, doesn't knock, just flings the door open and walks in. Hey, I need more money in a, that account. I'm almost out of the 50. And they're like, what do you mean? And he says, yeah, I made a few bad trades, you know, uh, just beginner's bad luck. So I'm going to need some more money because it's gone. And they're like, dude, there was $50,000 in that account. How did you do that? Keep in mind, they tell the new guys that it's real. It's not like this guy is aware of the fact that it was play money and he was taking risks that maybe he wouldn't with real money. They think it's real. So he's just casually coming in like, oh, I just lost 50 grand. It doesn't matter. And so they're asking him, like, why did he do that? How did he do that? Like, how is he not freaking out? And he just kind of shrugs his shoulders and goes, I know sometimes you got to spend money to make money, huh? Yeah, dude, but you're not opening a business. That's not like a saying for investment banking. Your only job is to take money and turn it into more money. That's literally it. That is literally your only job. Spending money to make money applies to, like, advertising for a business, you know? Maybe buying new equipment, getting getting a new website or something. It doesn't necessarily apply to, like, investment banking. Oh, hey, I took all of the money you gave me to invest, and I spent it all. Um, we're not gonna get any of it back, but I will say that it was sweet. And if you're asking why I did it, you gotta spend money to make money. So somewhere along this line, we're going to make the money back because I spent it and it is going to be a good time. Like, that's just not how it works. The boss, though, knows that Eric isn't just like the standard guy. And because it is 50000 in fake money, he has to be careful because he doesn't want him to go to his boss and get him fired. So he says that he's going to give him an additional 50000 Tells him it's real money. You know, it's not, but makes it very clear to Eric that this is real. And he says, okay, I'll be careful, just put it in my account, and he walks out before anything else can be said. And Mark looks at his boss and is like, why did you give him another 50000 you know? Why are you doing all this? And he says, well, the guy just lost $50,000 in 30 minutes, so when I inevitably have to fire him, and I have to have that conversation with my boss, who's his dad, I have to make sure that I have some pretty good reasonings as to why that went down. And if the kid manages to lose a hundred grand in the first two weeks of working here, I feel like that's a pretty good reason. And it stinks that, like, that's the way the world works sometimes. You have to have double extra proof that somebody's not cut out for the job because of who their parents is, bro. Parents are. Sorry, that was just a real bad English moment. But you guys get what I'm saying. Like, if this was anybody else and you managed to lose $50,000 in 30 minutes, they probably just would have escorted you out. It's not like you would have gotten another chance at that point. But maybe, maybe, just maybe, Eric got off to a bad start. He can pull it out. Nope, absolutely not. Two days later, Eric runs out of money and storms in asking for more. 
And Mark happened to be in the office that time too. And his boss says, no, you need to have a seat, Eric. We have to talk. And he tells him that they're going to have to let him go because it's just not working out. He had lost $100,000 in a week. He had refused to listen. It's just not going to work. And Eric just starts going absolutely ballistic, you know? How dare you ignore my talent? I'm going to be the best stock investment man of all time. What talent are they ignoring, man? The talent would be if you were good at making money. You actually did the exact opposite. You somehow found a way to do the exact opposite. So the boss doubles down and says, hey, it's just not going to work. You're not cut out for this type of stuff. And Eric, of course, pulls out the big guns. Do you have any idea who my dad is? And the boss is very blunt and says, it's not going to work. I would not recommend getting your dad involved. And Eric gets up, pulls out his phone and starts yelling that, you know, just wait till my father hears about this. Some straight up Charlie and the Chocolate Factory level stuff and storms out and they see him out in the parking lot on the phone talking and he's super animated so you can tell he's just pissed off and he hangs up and comes back in all smug and says that like my dad's gonna come in and talk to you about this and the boss doesn't get scared he just smiles and says all right man i told you you wouldn't want to get your father involved because he had just fallen into the trap card bro like now he gets to explain to your dad how bad you are at this And about an hour later, a dude in a suit comes in, clearly a very important fellow, and he's like, hi, I'm blank, I'm here to meet with your manager, and they go into this room, and Eric and Mark are called in, since Mark witnessed everything, and Eric's involved. And the dad opens extremely pissed off Rip. I thought I could trust you to train my son. He says you didn't train him and you set him up to fail to make an example out of him. Like, you should have given him some training. It's not his fault he couldn't perform since he wasn't trained. And the boss doesn't let Eric's dad finish before he has the forms out. He doesn't interrupt him, but as he's speaking, he pulls the forms out. And as the dad, like, finishes his little rant about how no one trained him, he hands him the papers and he says, well, here's the two papers that he signed saying that he did not want our training and that we were not to get involved with him at all. And I think, what was it? And he looks at Eric, buzz off, is is that what you said? And Eric kind of, like, eyes go wide and he realizes oh crap this might not go the way that I thought it was going to go and his dad's face changes and he looks at Eric and he's like Eric why did you say that you didn't want help like why did you do this and even then you denied it from two people like why did you go out of your way to sign these and Eric still a little bit embarrassed but not like fully gone of his ego decides to double down I know what I'm doing dad I don't need training and it's at that point that it registers oh my kid did this to himself like this is not their fault very obviously there's a problem here and so he kind of starts trying to double down and says that his trades were making all this money and they don't know where like The idea that he isn't performing comes from and his boss says all right well let's just pull up your account And Mark smiles because he knows that this account is going to be just the worst managed thing of all time. And sure enough, he pulls it up, puts it on this big screen for everyone to look at. And he had managed to lose $100,000 somehow before the first week had ended. And he pulls up every transaction. They go over them all explaining like where it was, how much money it lost. And something that you have to realize about the stock market is like a broken clock is still right twice a day. You know, the time is still that twice. So even if you're just dumb and you're gambling, eventually you should be able to have a profitable trade. Overall, you'll definitely lose money, but everyone could have like doubled their money one time if you're just throwing money into random stuff. This guy had somehow managed to lose money on every trade, which is almost more impressive. Like, he somehow actually beat the odds of straight-up gambling at being bad. That's going above and beyond. That means he wasn't just picking random stuff. He was putting research in and just being wrong every single time. So it takes a while, but they finally get to the end of all these transactions. And Eric is sinking into his chair the entire time because he realizes what's going to happen. But now his dad is pissed off too. And he turns to Eric and he's like, you told me you were doing good and they weren't teaching you anything. And Eric, not realizing how dumb this sound goes, well, it would have been fine if they went the opposite direction. Yeah, um, that's not really how it works. You know, if you put money in a company expecting it to go up and it goes down, you can't go, ah, Man, 50-50 chance, like you still lost money. It's it's not just a, a coin flip. 
And so at that point, his dad turns to Mark and his boss and starts apologizing and is like, I'm so sorry, I get it, I understand that Eric can't work here anymore. And Eric interrupts his dad and is like, what about my job? I need to work. And his dad now is fully embarrassed. Remember, he drove away from his job to come down here and like try to get involved and keep his son's job. And he says that he's just been embarrassed enough. Eric blew this opportunity. He's not going to go to bat for him anymore. And Eric starts looking like the whole world just landed on his shoulders, bro. The first time he had heard no in his life, the first time he had ever failed. And, and they end up leaving. But the entire time, the boss boss is like super apologetic, which is good on him. I feel like most people probably would have either been mad or been embarrassed and just fled as fast as possible. At least he had the awareness to realize that it was his kid's fault. Either way, I am going to give credit to uh, Mark's boss for knowing exactly how that was going to go down. He's like, look, we need the forms. We need to make sure that we got enough proof to show that it's really not going to work because he did exactly what he thought he was going to do. Eric, a little bit of advice, man. There's plenty of ways to be uh, very successful that don't involve, like, working and investing. You know, there's, there's tons of people that make a lot of money not in investment banking. I think you're going to have to be one of those people. You sound extra bad at investing. It's, it's not for everybody. Either way, that's the first story that I have for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate you pressing the like button, and let's get on to the next. All right, before we get into the next story time, on screen now is a gift card code. I give one of these away in every video. Just uh, say thank you to everyone who subscribed with those notifications on. So if you haven't already, you might as well just scroll down there, subscribe, turn on those noties, and if you already are, then you're a legend. You, you already know. So, uh, yeah, I'll shut up and let's get into the next story. All right, this next one was sent in to me by somebody named Max who works at a store in the mall. And it's like one of the four stores in every mall that sells the exact same stuff, but they all have different names and they're all a different company, but they sell the exact same thing. And it was right around back to school time and it just so happened that this mall still is a madhouse. I was kind of surprised it still gets busy there. I feel like everyone just does the online shopping thing, but people are everywhere. It's packed. Some people are like just throwing clothes up in the air just to try to make a distraction while they run for the exit. It's been a crazy day. And this guy comes in with his mom and something is very weird about the way they're staring at him. It's almost like they're sizing him up and he doesn't know them. He's just working. And he walks up to them because they're staring at him and he's like, hey, can I help you guys with anything? And they both look at him, very clearly look at his name tag and then go, Max! And he's confused, because like I said, he has no clue who these people are. Like, 100% does not know them. And so he tries to, like, nicely ask, um, hey, who are you guys? It's been a while. I, I don't really recognize you. You look so different. And the spoiled kid, who I'm just going to refer to as spoiled kid, goes, Max, are you kidding me? Come on, it's me, bro. And Max is just kind of standing there staring at him. And he's like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm confused. And he, instead of explaining who he is, saying a name or anything, goes, Oh, Max, it's totally cool. Anyway, since we're old friends, can I use your employee discount? And it clicks. Oh, they were sizing me up because they were like, I bet you we can trick that guy into letting us use his employee discount. He probably thought that most people in a very awkward situation like this wouldn't want to admit, Bro, I don't know you, so they would just be nice and let you use the discount. I don't know, that still seems like a long shot, but either way, Max is like, I don't know these. So now that he realizes that they're trying to mess with him, he decides that he's going to troll him back. Because look, if you're going to make me pretend to know you to try to get a discount, like I feel like trolling them back is just allowed. And so Max, not wanting to get played, says, yeah, yeah, uh, anyways, I'm more than happy to let you use the employee discount, but our policy is that you have to know my mom's name. Like, that's how close we have to be. And the kid and the Karen look at each other like deer in headlights and are shocked. And the spoiled kid's like, Oh, come on, Max. There's no need for that. Like, come on, we go way back. And it's not even a rule. Like, he totally made that up. He just wanted to mess with them. And so Max decides to mess with them a little bit further. He has this woman manager that's a little bit older who's insanely chill, like the best manager to work with, super fun, great... And they kind of have fun trolling rude customers from time to time. And so he calls her over and she comes over and he's like, hey, do you recognize them? And she says no, because obviously she doesn't. And the spoiled kid, who keep in mind, goes way back with Max, definitely knows his mom's name, but isn't going to say it right now, goes, oh, who is this? And Max takes this chance to mess with him and goes, dude, it's my mom. Don't you know her? 
and you would have thought that the two of them saw a ghost. They were like, oh, uh, well, uh, uh, so great to see you. And like I said, this manager's super chill and fun to work with, so she kind of rolls with it and is like, oh, are you a friend of Max's? It's so great to get to know people that are friends with my son. And they start freaking out, and they're like, uh, uh, well, well, yeah, it's so great to see you. And so Max says, yeah, they say they know us, Mom. Where do we know you from? And once they start asking questions, the mom grabs her son by the arm and says, whoops, we were mistaken, let's go. And before they can peel out of there, which is clearly their intention, Max, wanting to just, like, drive home the embarrassment a little bit, goes, oh, you were mistaken, well then, why did you say my name? Like, you said my name, you know? How would you be mistaken if you knew my name? And they both just get really bright-eyed and don't say anything and just run out of the store. They don't literally run, but you know that, like, hurried walk that people do when they've clearly got somewhere to be, but it's inappropriate to run in public? I'm just saying, if I see an adult running in public outside of, like, literally running clothes, like, if someone's running in running clothes, you know what's happening. But if you ever see a dude in a suit just sprinting, I'm just gonna assume that whatever is that direction is scary. Like, cause why in a- why is a dude in a suit sprinting that way? Either way, I, that was stupid, I apologize. I don't know, they leave, him and the manager crack up, but then they start talking about it, and they're like, I don't really even understand the point. You're just gonna confuse me into thinking I know you for like a- a 10% off code? Like, dude, just go online and look one up. If anything, I feel like it's easier to get those discount codes online rather than going in and trying to convince someone that you're old childhood friends. Super sick that you have a manager that just kind of lets you troll customers though, you know? Like, most managers would be like, THAT'S SO INAPPROPRIATE! Alright, and the last story I have, yeah, that's right, there's another one. You know what? I'm gonna do it again. Press the like button, cause we're 26 minutes in and I still got another one. Anyways, this is from something that I witnessed. So I end up going to this restaurant with a few of my friends, which is like downtown in the town I live in. And there's always something dumb going on downtown in the town when I live in. In the t town I live in. Why did I like just do a country song stutter right there? I apologize. Anyways, we walk in and we see like a huge 1 in 8 balloon. And we assume that someone is either turning 81 or 18, because those are the two combinations right there. And we don't see a ton of old people, so we just assume there's going to be a birthday party. And we walk past it in the lobby, and after that, I kind of forgot it existed. It's not like it was something that I really was sitting there thinking about. Who really cares? People have birthdays, people have balloons. It's not a big deal. It's just funny because it involves later the spoiled kid having to, like, sadly take the balloons out. Anyways, uh, we start, like, eating our meal and we're just having ourselves a normal conversation and all of a sudden we hear this commotion behind us. It's like a ton of screaming and we turn around and we see this guy holding the balloons and he's yelling, It's my birthday! And it's not like in a celebratory, like, it's my birthday way, you know, it's a very angry, it's my birthday. Like, he's telling somebody off, a very angry man. And the entire restaurant gets really quiet, because obviously everyone's turning their attention to this and kind of like, hold on, let's see what's going on. I'm not saying that reality television is just based on society, but I think if people start making a scene, the natural human reaction is to just watch. I think that's why reality TV does well, because it's just people making a scene all the time. Anyways, what's very apparent is he's yelling at somebody for ordering something that he doesn't like. Keep in mind, they're not ordering it for him. It's not like, oh, we only get to order one thing and we're all going to share. There's a ton of people. They had just ordered something that they wanted to eat that he was not a fan of. And he's yelling at them because apparently it's insanely rude to order something that the host doesn't like if you're out at a restaurant, but you're not the host, you're at a restaurant, and on top of that, who cares? Like, that's so stupid, bro. There's some food that I'm not a fan of, but if I'm out to dinner with my friend and they order it, I'm not gonna be like, oh, are you disgusting? Do you know how rude you are? No, who cares? Like, people have different tastes, dude. Imagine getting yelled at because you ordered something someone else doesn't like. And of course, the person isn't really taking it, but they're not yelling back. The only reason we know is because the birthday boy just kept yelling, like, you can't argue with me on my birthday, are you crazy? Do you remember that old Tyler the Creator vine where it's like, what, did you bring me a birthday gift for my birthday on my birthday to celebrate my birthday and he smashes the wine glass? That was really the vibe of what was going on. Like, you can't argue with me, it's my birthday. 
I hate people that think their birthday just gives them an excuse to do whatever they want. Like, congratulations, it's your birthday. It is a special day. People should be nicer to you than normal. However, I do think some people take it too far and they're like, whatever, officer, who cares that I punched the police horse? It's my birthday. And it's like, ah, oh, you can't do that. You can't really scream at everybody and freak out on them just because it's your birthday. But whatever, everyone's just kind of watching. And the manager walks up at this point because he's realized everybody's watching. And then the birthday boy starts going off on the manager because <laughs> it's his birthday. Who do you think you are? You can't tell me what to do. Do you have any uh, clue what day it is? Yes, you can probably guess what day it is. I don't want to say it again. And you can't really hear the manager because he's not yelling, but he's trying to kick the party out. And the entire party, realizing that they're causing a scene and everyone's staring, they just get up and leave, except for the birthday boy. Like, they realize, all right, let's get out of here. This is insanely embarrassing. I don't want to be here. But the birthday boy stands there and keeps arguing. And it was like everyone hit their maximum embarrassment and left but him. He proceeds to start going in on the manager. I'm talking about every insult under the sun. He's calling him stupid. He's calling him poor. He's calling him just like a loser. You name it. He's hurling it at him. And he's taking it like a champ. Honestly, dude, this guy definitely grew up in a Call of Duty lobby because he was like, oh, that's it? That's all you got? I'm a stupid poor loser? Oh, okay, okay, buddy. Yeah, all right. Look at you. You're freaking out holding balloons, buddy. Like, what do you want me to do? Take this insult seriously? Anyways, he lets that out and the manager goes, happy birthday, get out, and walks away, which was just an absolute G move. And after that, the birthday boy stomps outside and starts yelling at everybody out there for leaving. He probably was like, oh, why'd you guys abandon me? But I I'll tell you why, because you were freaking out and causing a scene for literally no reason and everyone was staring at you because it's your birthday. I feel like after that, I would definitely not go to that person's birthday again. I probably wouldn't really hang out with them either. Like, dang, man, that that's a little wild. At least this person's not, like, insanely old. Like, 18 is definitely too old to be doing this, but, like, at least it's not a 37-year-old. Like, at that point, you're just, you're just not gonna change. You know, I feel like people can change a ton when they're, when they're, like, a young adult, like, 18, 20, 30s. Once you hit, like, 40, though, bro, like, how much change are you really gonna do? Maybe that's, maybe that's doomer of me, because I'm not that old yet. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I'd really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. If you also enjoyed, you should go ahead and comment. This was a really long one, so I'd appreciate the comment and the like. It just helps the video do better. And if you're uh, new, subscribe. Turn on those notifications so you never miss out. And if you want to listen to this in a podcast form, I do post these on Spotify as a podcast. Feel free to check that out. And because the Christmas season is approaching, I'm going to take the time to plug the Christmas Karen sweater. Look at this thing. It's absolutely glamorous. Back again this year. So if you want to get the Karen Christmas sweater, I'll throw the link down below. No pressure. But on that note, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.